Last week on The Season. Vern Lundquist is synonymous with college football, and he's just been a great asset to our, our game. And uh, the least we could do is surprise him. Oh, oh my God. God. This is a gift that I'll treasure. Luke and his family are here. It's a, it's a make a wish. And the Freeze Foundation partnered with Tim Tebow's foundation to kind of make Luke's weekend a special weekend. Luke, how you doing, man? I'm Coach Freeze. I just think I wasn't a team player back then. Knew he had the capability, knew of him, knew of his issues. He said, this is how it's going to be. It's not going to change. You have to do right. He wants to rewrite his story, and I want to help him do that. Rewrite your story. Always. Finish it. Yes, sir. Don't, don't stop short. Yes, sir. Let's finish it. Ultimately, I understand what it is to be a quarterback at such a great university. Well, it was almost a nightmare finish for Alabama. Bro, we got to finish. For the love of my brother, for the love of my coach, we have to finish. When Akeem Judd runs the ball, you know it. Sir! Boy, Judd! The Durham, North Carolina native has earned every yard he's gained since arriving at Ole Miss. First and 10 to the 24 yard line of Alabama. There's a handoff to Judd. Judd off the left side, breaks clear! He may go! He's in the five! He's in the end zone! Touchdown! Ole Miss! Did you hear that? <laughs> he brings it every single play. If you hit him head on, you're going you gonna to probably feel it worse than he feel you. I think the main thing that he's got going for him is that, uh, that stiff arm. Well, that's like running into a log, isn't it? That was Porter old. Streeter on the tackle. An old that's stiff, stiff arm. That's old time football right there. <laughs> it's kind of special to watch, man. You just you see him in practice, and you not only see it, but you hear it. <laughs> Uh, what I call dancer's feet. He can move the power when he chooses to, uh, but he also has the ability, probably better than any back I've coached in a while, that can make you miss. Hand off, it's Judd straight ahead, has the first down, the 20, breaks clear, he may go, 10, 5, touchdown, Ole Miss, Akeem Judd. I don't know if it's a juke or a shake and bake or what it was, the defender completely bought it. If it's first and 10, and there's not much of a hole and the guy gets, gets tackled for no gain, it's second and 10 now, whereas if you break that tackle, it doesn't look like much, but you fall forward for three yards, second and seven is a whole different ball game. Yeah, well, Keem's got it both. He's got the feet and he's got the thump factor. When you when you go low and all of a sudden he can move his feet and get out of that, or if you try to hit him high, he's going to lower his shoulder before you get there and, and he's going to embarrass you. He is a load to bring down now, and the problem is he can't shake you, and then all of a sudden when you think he's about to try to make you miss, he, he's putting his pads down and he's running you over. Everybody was like, we need big back, we need big back, we need big back. You know, he's 225 pounds, and that's one of my favorite highlights is him in the Mississippi State game running through that guy. Straight ahead, big room, 45 to the 50, breaking a tackle is Akeem Judd. He's at the 45, hard running by Akeem Judd. I feel sorry for him after that. Guy came to hit him, and he ended up knocking himself out. So, man, you be like, man, that's one. I'm glad I'm glad he on my team, you hear me? I just braced up, and I guess he hit me at my stomach and bounced off, so. I really didn't try to run him over though. I was trying to, I didn't even see him to the last minute. Uh, I'm from Durham, North Carolina, better known as the Bull City. People say it's a nice town, but you know, it also has its bad parts. You know, you got the gangs, drug dealings, killings. Uh, I kind of grew up around all of that. I mean, you never know what could happen. You could be playing basketball and hear shots firing up the street, and you're still playing basketball, you know, because that just, every day it happens all the time. You're used to it. From here, you got Rochelle Manor Projects, and then you got Tarrant Key, uh, 
which is like a hood over here. And they beef every day. They used to shoot at each other from across the street, like a war song, especially at nighttime. In the daytime, you straight, you know. But man, in the summertime, and it get hot, that's when all the killing start happening. It happens every year. When the summertime comes, it start killing, man. It's, it's like, it's predictable. I actually got shot at right here by this phone booth. I was, uh, I was, I was going to my ex-girlfriend house. She stayed right there. And a black, I mean a big old black truck rolled by. And I had on a black hoodie, it was cold. Never forget. And uh, I guess they mistaked me from somebody else. And they just, they stopped right there at that stop sign on Enterprise and started shooting at me. And I ran right behind there and hid behind the building until I knew that they was gone. I'm gonna text one of my dudes I grew up with from Cornwallis, he still be out here. I'm gonna uh, make sure, you know, there ain't nobody that, that, that I don't know out there. I don't mind we don't got the cameras out there, but I'm, we straight though. We can go where I stay at. Yeah, man, this is where it all started though. This is when I started playing football. We had like a little flag football team out here. And shoot, this is when I really started knowing I could play football because I, I I just break away from people. I just run, juke people, you know what I'm saying? And it was natural. And the coach was like, man, you too good for flag football. You need to play, you need to play uh tackle, man. This is my brother Wesley, man. We grew up, he grew up, that's why I got him on it, because we grew up the same way. He, he the only one that, it ain't too many of us out here that, that's still out here like this, man. I'm chilling, bro. Yeah, man, yeah. We're gonna take them, no, I'm gonna take them around, you know what I'm saying? This the projects, man, you know what I'm saying? People beefing and stuff like that, you can't just pop out here with no cameras. Nah, you can't. You might get messed up, that's why I had to make sure my people was, was out here. This is my old crib right here. 3006 Apartment 8, Weaver Street. And yeah, this is our apartment, man, this is all we had, man. This little, this clothesline right here to this green tank right here was touchdown. That was it. And this is actually the this place where I first started playing football. I told him how Terrence. Yeah. Man, I was sitting on the porch one day and uh, dude, Terrence come from out of nowhere with a football, just talking to me like, hey, you trying to play football? I'm like, man, what? I don't, yeah, it don't matter. I ain't never met this dude a day in my life. <laughs> I lie to you not. He had his football, full football gear on and everything. Right here on this porch, man, I first started playing. I first got the love for the game. My mom was a single parent, so it was kind of rough because she worked all the time. So I was the one kind of maybe like more more of the time at home with them and, you know, making sure they ate and stuff like that because so, she was always at work. You know, my mom was going through some things at home and uh, my dad really wasn't around. And uh, things were just going downhill, man. I, I didn't really know. Uh, what was what was the deal until my mom was just disappearing for like two, three weeks at a time, three weeks at a time, you know, she wasn't in um, most of the time to like pay the bills or whatnot, so the, the lights would go off, no food in there. And then, man, I just basically dropped out of school, man, and, and um, I, had to, I had to survive on my own. But this right here, this house right here, this is where I used to stay at, 323 Phil Sparkway. It looked nice on the outside, but it was dark on the inside. Man, I'm talking about about two weeks straight with no lights, no food, no nothing, and I had to go, you know, I had to survive, man. I had to do what I had to do to survive. No lights, no cable, no nothing. You know, I was in a dark house, and nobody knew it because I was the type of kid that was just quiet and just taking on the situation. At the age of 16, Akeem was doing whatever he could to survive but he was about to receive a much-deserved break in his life. Uh, Miss Bullock, which is Marla Bullock, she was uh, my assistant principal. Of course, being the assistant principal, she meets a lot of kids, and she comes home talking about a lot of different kids, so I've had a lot of names come through. But um, she and Akeem, whew, she and Akeem probably met uh, maybe his sophomore year. One of his coaches actually came to me he just explained the situation in terms of um, not always actually being able to eat. So the first thing that I did was just to make sure that he ate, he ate every day. So when she told me about the situation, my first thing was, you know, I like Akeem. I said, well, just ask him if he wants to move in with us. When I asked him, he was like, yes. He was ready to come. He packed his bags pretty quickly. And she said his eyes got that big. And he was like, I do want to move in with you. And it 
just went from there. I said, well, tell them to pack your stuff and come on. It wasn't difficult because I done moved plenty of places. I done stayed with football players and stuff like that on my team throughout the year, so it wasn't really a difficult exchange. You know, it started off slow, and he was kind of like, you know, a little stiff when he got here. We said, listen, this is your home. This is home. Feel like home, treat it like home, this is home. It was kind of weird because that was like my principal and stuff like that, but then I seen how she was treating me normal, you know, treating me like her son, and you know, after a while I just started calling him mom. Well, one day I came home and he was on the phone with his friends, and we overheard him. Uh, someone obviously had asked him, where was he? And he said, hey man, I'm at home. My wife looked at me and started smiling, so we knew then he felt at home. And then it, just in conversation, we knew it was changing when it went from Mr. Bullock, Miss Bullock to Pops. It was like, Pops, so-and-so, and so-and-so, Mom, so-and-so. I said, okay, that's my boy. Akeem and football. When they say football is life, football is life for him. And I know that he sees it as an avenue for him to get out or to just overcome because he's had so many setbacks and he's using the opportunity that football is providing him. So just the opportunity even in itself to go to school because he never thought he would. I'm looking forward to his senior year. I, I think he's due for a coming out party. Um, you saw glimpses of that last year with his physical runs and how the way he finished some. I'm real happy of the person he is. He did come from a difficult environment, difficult background, uh, difficult area. And, um, you know, and he's, he's had some adversity since he's been here and had to make decisions. That red shirt year was tough on him. And um, I'm so glad he stayed with and look forward to, uh, to the way he's going to finish. It's a getaway. I mean, like, just think about all the trouble, you know what I'm saying, you, you've been in while you were growing up and, uh, and all the things that might have made you mad or upset or wish you could have got or wish you could have did. Just think about all that once you get on the football field. Like, with somebody like Judge, he can express it with how he run the ball. You know, coming from where he come from and the things that he's seen, uh, some of the situations he's been in to get to this point is, uh, is a miracle. And um, he's living it every day now. Again, I think he has a deep appreciation uh, for the things he has now uh, because of that background. Oh, man, words can't even explain. You know, I, without them, I don't know where I would have been, you know, because I was, I was going through some tough stuff and they was there to help me out with a lot of stuff, you know. My brother helped me out with a lot of stuff too. I can't say he didn't, he helped me out with Shoot, if it wasn't for him, really, to be honest, I wouldn't really be here. But uh, all, all three of those people, and there's more people in the picture, but to look back and see how far I am now, getting ready to graduate in May, you know, it's, it's crazy. Next on The Season. Third down, 10 for Georgia. Fire over the middle. Intercepted by Ole Miss. Picked off at the 50-yard line by Derrick Jones. Derrick Jones broke on it just like he was the receiver. We can chase that dog all day long. All day long. Well, you know, the fact that uh, we had had a couple tough games, you know, we couldn't wait to get back on the field. Throughout practices and meetings, you could just see that our guys were so fired up to come out and play and have a chance to play against an undefeated team. Everybody was ready to get back out there and start competing again and, you know, put this thing together, start clicking, and, and that's what we did Saturday. Hey, defense! We're down. Hey, there's going to be a lot of shifts and motions to start off. That's part of their opening script. They can make us think. Don't panic, just get over there, get lined up. It all starts up front. They're gonna be going up against a very talented Ole Miss front. They gotta push some people off the line of scrimmage. Here's Nick Chubb on first down, going nowhere. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah! The handoff off the left side, stacked up and driven back as Nick Chubb. So far, tough sledding for Chubb. 12.01 to go first quarter. There's the snap, Eason. Has time in the pocket. Lots of time. Now steps up, thinks about running. He's in trouble and dropped to the 35-yard line. Yes! 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 He will lose three, and Georgia has fourth and 16. Keep it up. Every single play has a life of its own. Every play means just as much as the one before. Derek Jones now is playing some defensive back. 
Eason on third down and 10. Gets level and throws an interception. Picked off at the 50 yard line by Derrick Jones. He comes down the sidelines to the 30, to the 20, to the 10, to the five. He's in the end zone. Touchdown, Derrick Jones just joined the defense this week. And the Rebels go up nine to nothing. We had some injuries on the defensive side and the coach asked him, uh, to come over and play DB, and he didn't hesitate not one bit. And I have a lot of respect for that. He's been a true team player, uh, you know, playing on both sides for basically the last four years. I told him afterwards, it's just like you're a receiver and caught a touchdown pass. We'll take it. Derrick Jones broke on it just like he was the receiver, caught it, came to the Rebel sideline, picked up some blocks. He walks into the end zone. Yeah, that was where you could really tell the energy was so high because everybody was so excited. For him to make that play in that moment, his first couple snaps, and for him to take it back to the crib, uh, it was a great moment for our team and a great moment for him. We can chase that dog all day long. Markel Pack is in for the first time. Play action, swing pass, near side to Pack. He's going to throw downfield. He's got Ingram caught at the 35. Ingram down the sidelines, knocked out of bounds at a 20. Now Kelly, one on one left side. A.J. Brown caught at the two, backs across the goal line. They say he's down at the one yard line. A.J. Brown, so physical. Under center is Pellerin as the quarterback. Going to hand it off left side and breaking the plane and into the end zone is Devon Penniman, the freshman from Houston, Texas, has a TD. We're back up. Our offense is pretty darn good, and we're back up. Well, that's the debut like that. I've been talking about this for about three weeks. I've been talking about the debut for about three weeks now. If they give you all the four down front, y'all got to be getting excited, and let's go run that thing now. And he fakes the handoff, sprints out to his right, wants to throw in trouble, hit, breaks away, now fires it deep into the end zone. He's got Lodge, and he holds on for the touchdown to Marcus Lodge for the TD. by Kelly, A, to get open, and B, to throw a bomb to the end zone for DeMarcus Lodge. The big thing I told him is we are not slowing down. We are going full speed ahead, uh, get up there, get the ball snapped, and let's go and keep these guys on their heels. There's a crossing route underneath, the slant route caught by Lodge, and Lodge still his feet, churning to the 40. Kelly to throw, out route, caught by Ingram, far side, he turns down field, lowers his head and blows through a bulldog. Now handoff straight up the middle to the 20, to the 15, to the 10 yard line, Akeem Judd still churning, he's down to the nine for the Rebels, a pickup of 16. There's a snap, he sprints to his right, being chased behind, lobs it toward the end zone to Ingram, he goes up, he holds on, touchdown, oh Miss! I went up and got it and I, it was weird because I caught it and looked down and I felt like I was in the air forever, like at the dude, I guess he, he kind of hit me and bumped me up a little bit even more. And, I just wanted to hold on to the ball because I was up there for a long time. I thought I was going like, to land on my head or something, but I got, gathered myself and got up, and uh, it, was, it was fun. It was a good little celebration in there, too. You flipped the script today. You flipped the script, man. You flipped the script. All I heard all week, I don't know if Ole Miss get back up. Like, yeah, yeah, well, we got back up. Yeah, we got back up. Good job gets done today. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Let's go, baby. Take it to Judd, keep it now, swing it out the far side, caught on the sidelines of the 40 to the 45 to the 50 as Jefferson gets around one man, dropped to the 40. I do, I do this so far. Oh, oh, man. Man. He did it ridiculous. He's going to be ridiculous. Second and goal. Here's the pitch on the end around. Brasley to the end zone. It's 37 to nothing. Steve, baby. I called him. You know, the energy stayed up the whole time. Uh, halftime was really energetic. Obviously, we had trouble with finishing in the last two games, so all week we pressed on finishing, finishing. Look at Kelly oh. here. Huge running lane for Chad Kelly inside the 20. Kelly, touchdown, 44 nothing. Ole Miss. He's kind of running out of gas towards the end, just kind of galloping a little bit, but uh, for him to get in the end zone off that play and him to show a little bit of speed, I think it was a pretty big play for him. That is a play where we read the edge. It was actually a run play called. If they they don't play it honestly, they're going to have to pay, and the, and the quarterback will take it and go score. Here's the snap to Eason as we start the fourth quarter. He is hammered. Ball comes out. It's on the ground at the 30-yard line. It was Gerald McDowell who made the hit. 
And that's it. The Ole Miss Rebels over the Georgia Bulldogs. The final score, an impressive win for Hugh Freeze and his Rebels, 45 to 14. We just got a big win today. Back on road to success. Greatness. I love it. We here, showing people that we really here. You know, we ready to play. We're going to come back harder next week. Hey, man, good win for the team, man. It's momentum going into next week. Hey, we got to keep it going, though. Keep it rolling. Stay tuned, baby. I told you this morning the difference in the past and history. The past is what really happened. The history is what they remember. Hey, you took a big step today in making history. When we went into the pit with the line today, we didn't come out until the job was done. So congratulations to you, man. Enjoy. Enjoy doing this together. Love one another, but always tonight protect this. Just really pleased uh, for our guys. I thought we had a really good week playing uh, Another one of the top ranked teams in the country. We've had our share of that in September. And they're just really proud and uh, hopefully we can build upon it and, uh, and get a few guys healthy and, and finish strong next week. It kind of just gets us in the right direction. Uh, we're, we're for the rest of the season, we're going to take one week at a time. Every game's a statement game. And uh, this, is, this is going to be a huge statement. And uh, so we just got to go in every day, work hard, and remember, execute for four quarters on Saturday.